Hey everybody, it's Mr. N, and we are going to cover the next section. This is on perpendiculars and angle bisectors. So let's take a look at what we have here. And the first theorem that we will be discussing is the perpendicular bisector theorem. And it says, in a plane, if a point lies on a perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So basically, I could point any point on this perpendicular bisector. So if I take a look at this triangle A, B, C. This is a perpendicular bisector. Now, why is it a perpendicular bisector? Because it's cutting the segment A and B in half, and it's perpendicular to it at point P. So this is what we'll call our perpendicular bisector. So any point I put along this perpendicular bisector, no matter where it was, that distance from A to this point and B to that point will be the same. And that's what it's saying. The converse is just the opposite, and now what we're saying is if I have a point that's equidistant from A and B, so if that's the same distance, then this has got to be on the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so two easy, quick theorems here, and which is something that you should kind of just know uh, by intuition after doing a bunch of problems. And now we have this new word, which is called a locus, and just that means a set of points. So if I say locus, I'm just saying a set of all the points that satisfy a condition. So the perpendicular bisector of a segment can be defined as the locus of points in a plane that are equidistant from the endpoints of a segment. So here is the next theorem, the angle bisector theorem. And on this one, what we have is if a point lies on the bisector of an angle, so if it's on this bisector, then it is equidistant from the two sides. So now we're saying that this distance right here, I'm going to use a different uh, pointer, that distance and that distance will be the same as long as it's on this angle bisector. And how we measure distance is perpendicular. You can't measure it this way. You can't measure it that way. You measure it perpendicular to the segment because that's going to be the shortest distance and these will end up being congruent. All right, so let's see what we got. The converse is if these are right here congruent, then this is an angle bisector. All right, so not too bad. Let's do a few examples. So let's skip over. Uh, we're going to do some in class uh, with the warm-up, but let's just skip over to here and take a look at this. So on this first example, let's see what we got. It says... Uh, the directions were there, uh, cut off, but it's saying determine if this is a perpendicular bisector. So we have to determine if these are perpendicular bisectors. That's what the directions say for this. Sorry that they got cut off. But, okay, let's take a look. Well, it's perpendicular, and these sides are equidistant, and it goes through this vertex, so this one is a yes. It is a perpendicular bisector. Over here, it goes through this point. It's perpendicular, but we are not told anything about the distances down here. So let's see if we can figure something out. And here's what we can determine. Since this triangle I'm looking at, it's cut into two triangles, that's a right angle. Okay, so that's going to be a right angle. This piece will be congruent to itself by reflexive right in here. So that means these two triangles, this one and this one, will be congruent by hypotenuse leg. Okay, so these are congruent by hypotenuse leg. That means RU is congruent to US. So that means this is not only a perpendicular right here, but it also bisects it since those two are the same. So in this case, it is a perpendicular bisector. Over here, I'm taking a look at this one. Okay, uh, number one, because there's my angle. Number one, it's not perpendicular, even though these two are congruent. This is not a perpendicular bisector, so to speak. Okay? Now let's move on to the next problem over here. It says find the indicated measure. Well, um, over here, we need to find AD. Well, AD is this piece right here. And if I know that this is a perpendicular bisector, I know that these will be the same. So AD equals 20 because I end up with congruent triangles. Okay, G2J. 
over here. Well, this is a perpendicular bisector, which is going to make these two triangles equal. So this will be equidistant from that, right? So those two points are going to be equidistant. So that means I could say 4x plus 5 is the same as 2x plus 11. Go ahead and solve this. You're going to get 2x equals 6, so x will be 3. All right, moving on to the next one. Let's slide this up a little bit, and let's see what we can do with this. Over here, it says that I need to find P to Q, that piece in there. Well, over here, just going back up here, this one was not on a perpendicular bisector, but this is, we can conclude, since these two triangles are congruent, because that will be right here congruent to itself. Let me, let me just clarify something back on this problem right here. This will be congruent to itself, right? So this triangle 1 and triangle 2 are congruent. This is a right angle, so they're congruent by hypotenuse leg again, which means this is congruent to that. So this is an angle bisector. It is not a perpendicular bisector, but it is an angle bisector, okay? So just clarifying something over there, because that helps us with this problem, because we know that this is an angle bisector as well, because this right here, right here, is congruent on each side, and this is a right angle. So these two triangles will end up being congruent, so this piece is 14, so PQ will be 14. Again, you could do it by congruent triangles, which is what I'm saying, but since we know that it's an angle bisector, these two pieces will be equidistant as long as they lie on this. Over here, the measure of angle DGF, DGF is the full one. Well, if these are congruent, that means this has to be on the angle bisector, so 3x plus 8 has to be the same as 5x minus 12, so 2x over here is 20, so x is 10, and now we can plug it back in, since x is 10, we need d, g, f, we need the whole thing, so we could say 3 times 10 plus 8, and that's 38, oops, 38, I don't know why I wrote 308, 38, and there's two of those, right? There's this one that's 38, and there's this one that's 38. So the full angle D, G, F will be 76 degrees. All right. Over here, we found X. I forgot on uh, J, G. We found X, but they wanted J, G, so you got to plug that back in. So that's 2 times 3 plus 11. So that's 6 plus 11, which is 17. All right. That was the lesson. Hopefully this wasn't too bad. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.